Hi, I'm Jeff Rauna. I'm a composer uh, for film and TV and video games and whatever needs composing. I have been uh, an avid user of Macs for quite a number of years, for probably more than 12 years. I started using it in the 90s experimentally for some sound design and sound manipulation. Uh, I used it heavily in the soundtrack to the movie Traffic in 2001. I've used it uh, since on a number of other projects, more or less in the same way as a, as a sound design element, often then taking those sounds, sampling them, or uh, printing them so that I could integrate them into a score. Uh, but now I'm using Max in a, in a much more uh, simple and very practical way, just to help drive my studio in, in a way that, that makes my life a lot easier, and I wanted to show it to you very quickly. So my studio is um, not too unusual. I have two Macs, uh, one running Logic, which is my main sequencer, another one running Pro Tools, which hosts my video and dialogue, and um, eventually my music is recorded and printed into that. What I've done um, over the last uh, couple of years is I've integrated another Mac, which is just a little Mac Mini, and I bought a little touch screen that I found, found on eBay for about 50, 60 bucks. And what I used it for, if you come on in, in this section here, um, as I'm sitting at my computer, and even though I have a, uh, a touch screen and some faders, uh, I often have the need to um, control my studio in a way for working to pictures. So I have over here a little, a little mixer, which I use. Uh, I have my surround sound on six faders, there I have my dialogue track. I have sometimes when there's temp music and I also have click. So um, that's being done on a mixer. So that mixer really functions just as a room monitor. It's really a kind of a big volume knob. Everything of any sophistication is happening in either uh, Logic or Pro Tools. So what, it, what was great was that I could um, be working. And I have a, 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 a scene up. Let him dance right now in the next one. Oh, don't want to so there's the dialogue, and then here's their temp score, which is what the producers wanted me to listen to. And I can turn those off anytime I want. And then I have the fader with my music. Now, what's great is, um, quite often as I'm writing, I need to have the dialogue at a very specific level and listen. Sometimes I want to hear the music, let my score loud. Sometimes I need to listen to it very buried down, depends on the scene. So, super handy uh, for me to have perspective between my music and, and the dialogue. And then from time to time I need to just check in with the temp score because they've made some edits and I want to hear how they've made uh, changes. And then the click track just means that I can raise and lower my click without touching dialogue or my music. So this is great. Then I also added just a couple more things that were very simple for me, which is mostly just being able to tap, go to my first 10 locators, and uh, Logic and Pro Tools jump, and if you see the video stays in sync with it. So this, is, this has been very handy. So all very good. Um, and it's been a, a tremendous asset for me to uh, just quicken my work. I have all these expression controllers. I have my studio, you know, right there under, under my fingers. But then I decided that there was really one other thing that I wanted the system to do, and that was specifically when I have a director or producer come into the room. Uh, I don't want to be here pushing buttons. Uh, I want to create, and this is really, really important, when I'm playing new music for a director or producer, I need to kind of put on a little bit of a, of, a, of a performance, and it involves me not getting too into buttons, but I want to be able to mix the music uh, to the dialogue and create an experience that will really mimic how the music will sound when they're dubbing the picture or when it's in final play. So what I did was I created a, um, a Max patch, which you can kind of have a look at right there. It doesn't really matter what the details are. But really, it's a very, very simple little uh, traffic cop. It takes uh, data that needs to go to different places and routes it as needed. And that's just hidden in the background. That's not there. The real fun part is what I have on an iPad. And using TouchOSC, I wrote 
a, and I did this probably in less than an hour, I created a little, a little template which lets me basically sit back on my couch with my director and operate the whole studio as the way that I play my music. You can see that I have my dialogue, my music, my uh, temp score if, if they ask for it, so that I can go ahead and play a, a cue. If I don't dance right now, I'm the next one. I can shut off the dialogue. There's my music, which I can turn up and down. He brings in dialogue. He doesn't let me talk to anyone. You're the only one that talks to me. Whenever I need to, I can mute the dialogue. I want to hear the music very well. And then it's great because I can move from um, marker to marker. So they can say, oh, go back to the spot where, you know, such and such happens, and I can play from there. And so everything is there under my fingers. So what I do is I don't sit here, I sit with my director and we can have a conversation and there's no, and all the technology is hidden. And uh, I can even hand this to, to them and they, they love being able to mix dialogue and music and really get a sense of, um, of how things are gonna sound. And it, it has been a huge help uh, for me. And it, frankly, it wouldn't have worked without having Max as a way to uh, send the, the data from OSC, from Touch OSC, to wherever it needs to go in the room because of the way I sort of distribute the load uh, here. So that's uh, that's a simple little um, use of Max for some very practical studio use. If you have any questions, you can always email me. I'm sure the address will be on the Cycling 74 page. And uh, love to hear from you at some point. Bye-bye.